All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Anand Pastor. Pastor Anand <laughs> Faraji, Heavy. the newest pastor of Lakewood Church. Yes, sir. Newest pastor of Lakewood Church. Now, a couple of things about Anand. Number one, uh, grew up here at Lakewood. Um, went through went through the leadership program, the Leadership University in 2023, the very first class for Leadership University the class ever. Come on now. And uh, was the youngest member and is now um, the the youngest pastor on staff at Lakewood Church, uh, English or Spanish, and has been in it for what, three weeks? Yeah, I think two, probably. Two or three weeks. I don't know. Officially announced ask. as the newest English junior high pastor. Yes, sir. Serving under Pastor Devante. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stephanie and Pastor Caleb and Gabby yeah. and the whole crew. So, yeah. how does that feel? How does it feel to hear the phrase "Pastor Anon Faraji"? It honestly, it doesn't feel real. If I'm being quite like, it's so funny. I'll come on Sundays and they'll be like Pastor Anon, and I'm like, "Who me?" And I like turn around. It's really, really strange. But um, honestly, I'm just honored. Really, that that's the biggest thing. I think I, from a young age, I think I've always known the the weight that comes with being a pastor and being a shepherd and the calling on that and so um, my mom from a young age has always been very particular about me saying like, if you have a pastor in your life call them pastor you know and like not even try like to feed their ego or anything but just because of it's like, it was a, like a respect thing and so yeah now the to honor. be yeah, yeah 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 and so now the fact that I am pastor and on now I think it's it's just like interesting and it, it's cool from like students calling me it to even my friends who are like jokingly be like oh my pastor pastor and on just it's like my peers and it, it's just an honor that's that's the biggest thing for me it's just honor and I'm grateful thankful so give, give everybody a little bit of an idea uh, how old are you 22 22 years old and when do you turn 23 next February <laughs> yeah. love it yeah how does it feel to be 22 and to, to have the opportunity to invest in kids lives on a level that you're on a staff yeah it's uh man honestly it's it's mind-boggling from to be frank it's uh I just feel like it's, I'm at such a young age you know what I mean but I think that's the coolest part about it is you know where I'm at, especially with junior high, I'm not, you know, it's been 10 years, but I'm not too far removed to where, you know, I'm still, I, I use the same social media apps that they use on my day to day. I see the same trends. I see all the same stuff. And so I also am able to see the same stuff that they're walking through as well. And the same things that they're struggling with. And with that, I think it puts a, um, I think I have like a very particular task, especially for me as a younger pastor yeah. to say that, you know, not only do I know what you were going through at this age, but like it, it's not too long ago. We sometimes may go through the same things, especially even if it's like a high school student. And so with that, I think I have the unique privilege of being able to actually like walk it out with them as well and let them know like, hey, whatever you're struggling with, whether it be anxiety, depression, um, mental health issues that have become more prevalent as I've been growing up. It's, yeah. it's like, this was me struggling last week. So I'm giving you like a, a case by case basis of how I worked this out and how I went to God with it. And so it's, it's almost, it's cool. It's, it's really cool because I feel, um, I think sometimes I'll try and like dumb down the wisdom that I may have because I'm so young, yeah. but always remembering the fact that I think because I'm living it out, walking it out day to day, I think it's, it's helpful for them to be able to hear the practicality of how I did it in my life today. So yeah. it's, it's, it's great. It's love really that. Cool. Yeah. Hey, do me a favor. Would you share with us your last three sins? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. just kidding. That's yeah, yeah. actually one of our interview questions so, uh, that I always, anytime we do like leadership yeah. program interviews for leadership university, yeah. that's the opening question I always yes. do to sort of break the break ice, the ice. Yeah, with I've, people I've got this question. <laughs> for people just to laugh and go, okay, we can have we're, a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's just, it's just a get to know you conversation. Yeah. Right. And, and, uh, and then, and then ask a few like, why do you want to take the program sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I remember when when we first got on staff mm -hmm. in 2012, Dr. Paul did that at our oh, yeah. interview lunch. He was like, hey, tell me about your last three sins. And I went, <laughs> well, I'm about to lie. I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm about, about to, to lie. lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was one of those things that, um, you know, I think dealing with uh, or, or investing in and, and preaching and teaching and all of that with... Right younger audience junior high to high school there has to be that openness there has Facts. to be that transparency Facts. fun there has to be all of that there has to be it. and they, they can read it if it's not there too right and that and that started with like my age group like we we do that now gen z like we're very very capable of seeing through the fake because i think we've grown up seeing the fake 
on like social media on the internet and whatnot so when it comes to real time and real life we'll talk to people and we're like oh yeah this is not a genuine person and so i i've never i can never try to pretend to be something i'm not because they'll read that and they'll be like oh, okay yeah i'm not really vibing with you so i'm gonna leave you alone and yeah it to your point just yeah that well, we we did a we did a panel in one of our classes just a few weeks ago. We did where we had you and Gabby Lozano mm -hmm. and Gigi. Yes, and we sat and had a conversation, and I asked y'all about that, and that was one of the things that I found fascinating mm -hmm. that you said. I'd love for you to elaborate. Yeah, but you said the reason that we care so much about vulnerability and transparency is because we live in a world on social media that can be so fake. We're looking for what's real. That's it. Yeah, I mean it. For us, it's as we were, as at least as I was growing up, there's a lot of people like, especially when Instagram first came out, it's like you could put a filter on this, slap a filter on that. You know what I mean? There's like beauty filters now with Snapchat and stuff like that. And so, or even, you know, it pastors will say all the time when they're preaching, like we judge, you judge your regular life of somebody's highlight reel. It's, we don't really get to um, see sometimes the realness of what some people walk through. Mm. And even when it comes to our day to day, we, we sometimes see the same thing as well. We're able to pick it up quick because, you know, sometimes people will post like a reel or people will post like trying to be like personal or yeah. like trying to be open about certain things. And we're like, um, how genuine is this? And so it's just like carried over into our daily life of whether it be we're in school, um, in the workplace. Now, a lot of us are stepping into that and we're seeing that with even people who are like higher than us. It's like, sometimes and it may be to our detriment as well on occasions but sometimes we'll we'll sometimes pull back on the respect that we should give to an authority figure because we don't feel that connection we don't feel that transparency mm. and so like it's it's something that i think again it's i think it can sometimes hinder us but i think it's also one of the best things about us is now i think because we have that in you the want back what's of our honest mind, yes and i think now we try to do our best as young individuals now to be as honest and as transparent as we can be for future generations and like in the seat that i'm in now it's the same thing of trying to be as transparent and as genuine as i would want a leader in my life to be so yeah, yeah. well and speaking of leaders in your life i know that we have you've been at lakewood pretty much 18 years I was since I was four yeah since yeah. you were four years old yeah. I mean it's been a long journey yeah and um we've had an opportunity to get to know your family mm -hmm. uh very close with your mom and your Fact. sister mm -hmm. and I think that um you've had quite a journey getting to this point and that's why yeah. I, I wanted to I wanted you to share a little bit of your story today yeah. with us yeah, yeah, yeah um is just share like how did you get here yeah. you're 22 years old yeah. you're the first generation z pastor ever hired at Lakewood Church that's wild too. you're the youngest pastor on staff mm -hmm. Um, and this wasn't a, like, this wasn't a, hey, we just need somebody to fill a spot mm -mm. and we're just going to hand it to somebody who's been at the church for a year. Mm -hmm. um, if you've been at the church for a year, we love you. We're I'll glad you're here. He give, can do it. Give a year will, to, uh, of your life. Our pastor says it every <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> but I think this has been an 18 year journey. Yeah. And I guess my question is, how did you get here? Yeah. Take us through a little bit from the, from the beginning, because you started in kids life. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. How much time do we have? It's, 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 it's a journey. But my mom started bringing me my sister to church. I was four. So my sister was probably like almost two at the time. And I didn't start serving here at Lakewood. It was funny. My mom would tell me from like a young age, she's like, you know, you should you should sing at church. You should like lead worship. And for me, when I was a young age, I, when I was at a young age, I thought that worship leading was like for girls. And it was like, girls were worship leaders, guys were pastors. And like, that was just like, my mind that's just like what i saw yeah. i didn't really see any like cooler younger guys who were like leading worship and yeah. i was like oh now nah, i'm cool um but then we i do the j life program when i'm in third grade um and this is the j life program it was junior leaders in full excellence we don't do it anymore but it was a program at the time where it was like from third grade to sixth grade you were able to be in this program and you would get to serve in different capacities at the church so I got to do like security while I was doing security. Not really sure. Um, I was just walking with the two big security guys and we're just walking around the church. I'm like, if anything really went down, I would run, <laughs> but it's fine. It was a cool experience, you know? Um, Free sucker. <laughs> right, 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 right. And I'm like, like, dude, you're nine, like relax, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You, you know? But um, with that, we got to, I did registration. Um, that was like one of the first things I did. and. That was when I really, doing that program, I think really made me build a love for serving God's church. And and I think at the time I didn't realize how big of a deal it was. I think it was it was more for me. I was like, man, it's just something I really enjoy doing. Like I really love checking students in for them to come to Kids Life. And so further along now I'm in fifth grade and this is like J-Live three. And 
I got the chance. We got to help with worship. And at the time, we would have hand motions for our worship services in Kids Life. And so for all the j Life, you know what I'm saying? We were doing our little <laughs> dancey dance. And um, we got the chance to be like at the front of the stage in our Kids Life services. And we would be doing hand motions so that the students in the room would follow along. And so I was doing that. Because kids got kids to gotta worship with every we, part of their body. Every single part. They have energy part. and they got to move every we, part as well gotta, as sing. We yeah. got to keep them engaged because some of them, they don't know that they have this beautiful angelic voice yet. So they use their body. Yep. They use their body to worship. And it, and it's good. And it's a fun time. And so I remember the Kids Life uh, worship director at the time, her name was Beverly Carter. She came up to me and she was like, why aren't you on my worship team? And I was like... I didn't have a good answer for her. And, but in my head, I was like, you didn't hear me sing a lick. Like, I was just here. I just practiced these, yeah. these hand motions. I just want to make sure I was doing it well. You know what I mean? And she was like, I'll see you at, you can come try out this coming Saturday. And I was like, okay. I told my mom, I was like, mom, I'm about to try out for the Kids Life Worship Team. I don't know what to sing. And she was, my mom was so excited. Fast forward, I end up trying out. I get on, I get to get on the team. And then I start leading worship when I'm in fifth grade. And I immediately, when I started leading worship, I knew I was like, oh, yeah, I think this is I, I think at the time I didn't really have the words for it. But I was like, I don't know if I'm made to do anything else as far as in the church. This is this is something I enjoy doing. And I've always loved music. I think my mom has always been like, I don't have too many like musical family members. I have an uncle that produces and DJs, but that's like to the extent. Um, but it my mom was music connoisseur. She's always playing like good music in the house and stuff like that. And like obviously worship music as well. And so. With this, I start worship leading and I get the chance to do a lot of cool stuff. Like it was when I was like in sixth grade, I got the chance to lead worship in the main sanctuary for like a Mother's Day special. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I remember that. Yeah. And I was, it was, it was I was wearing a snapback on a Sunday morning. <laughs> it was literally great. Like for, for anybody it, out there uh, who may not know what a snapback is, it's a hat. <laughs> oh, it's a hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Depending yeah. on the demographic Depending watching on the demogra this. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, gotta, yeah, gotta no. be mindful. Um, snapback hat. Yes. I had a snapback hat on at 830 in the morning. Uh, and it was, it was just hilarious. But over time, I just get cooler and cooler doors start to open. And I see, I'm like, okay, God, I think this is like, I'm, I want to keep doing this. This, this, this feels right. Um, and so I started leading worship when I'm in the junior high services. And then once I get to high school, I start getting to lead worship in high school um, and in, in the young adult services as well. And I'm like, wow, God, like, I, I think worship, like, this is it. You know what I mean? And I was like, God, this is so cool. It, it was funny. We just we just came from a training with Jade Simmons. And she was like, you know, whenever God gives us a glimpse of certain things, like we take it and then we just like put our own twist on it and then we run with it. So for me, I was like, oh, God, worship is it. Um, and it's funny, like, you know, when I was younger, people would be like pastor and nod and like I would get the chance to I think the first time I ever got the chance to speak was in when I was in junior high, actually. And it's so funny. I, pastor Caleb, who was our old junior high pastor, um, he he just sent me a picture of my first like mini message that I did. Oh, yeah. And it was from 2015. Wow. And it was I was 13 years Nine old. Nine years ago. Isn't that crazy. Yeah insane and they, he found the picture and I literally found the notes from that sermon and it was funny enough it's called trying new things which I think is hilarious for this new season that I'm in now but that was my first time speaking but I never thought I would get a chance to do it here and there and like I, I felt like I was a very good communicator at a young age and I was very well spoken but I was like nah singing leading worship this is this is it like pastoring I'm not really you know I'm like if I'm cool God, yeah. like I, I love leading worship um, and then I think I, so then in 2020, my second semester of my freshman year of college, I go to DBU and I'm not in Houston and Dallas not, Baptist. I'm at Dallas Baptist University mm -hmm. and I'm there for a semester. Didn't really go too well. You know what I mean? It was, it was a, the, the valleys were very low. And like it was, it was a little bit, we got a little treacherous, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. from that time, I wasn't really doing any serving. I wasn't really doing anything. Like I, I moved and I was like, okay, God, I'm get connected and plugged in with uh, maybe doing some worship stuff at DBU. It didn't come into fruition. I was like the church I was going to over there in Dallas. I was like, okay, maybe I can get connected here. Didn't end up happening. And I think during that season of my life, I think the Lord was really trying to teach me that, hey, you don't really talk to me or minister to me unless you're on the platform. And I was like, ah, got it. Thanks. Appreciate that. And I think it was one of those moments where I got like a chance to just sit down and be with God. And again, I, it wasn't like, I had a couple friends over there, but they didn't really go to my campus. So I felt like it was just me and God in, in the dorm room. And I was just really building like an intimate relationship with them. Kind Fast of like, uh, kind of like King David. In the, exactly. in the shepherd's field. Yes. Where it was just him and God. That's it. And God was preparing him. That's it. And, he, and little did I know. He, I he feel was like that'll him. preach. That'll <laughs> most definitely <laughs> preach. Listen, 
let me tell you something. We can switch the podcast. It's not right my first now. time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's but, that's, but it's so but, but yeah. it's so true. It's it is. so true. Uh, all kidding aside, like that yeah. that is how God does it in his church. Yes. He prepares people long before they ever get an opportunity yeah. to set f- set foot on a platform. Yep. Cuz we use we use the terminology platform mm-hmm. at Lakewood. Sometimes mm-hmm. people use stage. Right. I have to catch myself. Mm. Cuz it's not a stage for me, it's a platform for God. There you go. Oof. Yes. So God mm-hmm. prepares you when it's just you in the shepherd's field yep. doing exactly in that moment what he's called you to do and yep. the responsibility will grow it went for from sheep for david to people right for david right so anyways yes i felt like that was your journey and we got yeah. to watch this by the way we we all of the pastors on staff yeah that have known anand now for for me almost 13 years yeah i've gotten to watch this every step of the way yeah. for, with you yeah and it has been faithfulness 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 everywhere yeah. you've gone you, you've shown up, yeah. you've been there, yeah. you've served, you've given, um, and then you've listened to God. That's right. the other one. Right. And so share yeah. a little bit about that. Like at DBU, you yeah, came yeah, to yeah. the realization that you're like, this ain't it. I was like, yeah, this is not it. Um, and so I was like, I got, and it was so funny. I was coming back to Houston so frequently. Like we, we had made this big thing. Oh, no, I was going away to Dallas for school. I was back at Lakewood pretty often. So it didn't yeah. feel like I was gone. But um fast forward what happens is i get into a car accident in dallas and then i'm like my car has to be in the shop i'm like i'm not gonna stay here if i have no car so i'm gonna and we were you know you're able to like go to school online and whatnot mm-hmm. so i was like i'll just come back to houston um and then i come back to houston and then it's funny at the time um it was you and abner who were who were at over youth and abner had asked me he was like hey are you coming back to houston and i was like mm, i don't know and he was like Okay, but I think me and him both knew I was like definitely yep. coming back, um, and so I go back and then I come back and then I'm in Houston and it's like summertime, and I'm like yeah I'm just gonna do HCC online, and Abner asked me he's like hey would you want to be the life group leader for the Southwest Life Group and I was like and it was cool because that was the Southwest Life Group Life Group was the life group I was a part of when I was in youth so now getting the chance to like step in and lead it is yep. like kind of it was so full circle and i was like of course like so i got to do that with me me and gabrielle lozano um who we mentioned earlier and so i'm back in houston and i start getting to lead life group and i'm I'm back in youth and doing all the things leading worship i'm like i'm back i'm back in the sweet spot i said god thank you i shouldn't have left thank you jesus but i think also i really felt um i was just operating out of overflow because of just so much time spent with him alone and i wasn't doing a lot of pouring out any pouring out to be fair it was like it was just me and god when i was at that semester when i was in dallas and now i'm back in houston i'm ready to life group lead and ready to lead worship and i think i had a better understanding of what it meant to have an actual intimate relationship with god that's good and so i'm doing that um time is going by time is going by and i think you're serving okay. back in youth. Serving back in youth. Serving in young adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leading yes. worship. Yes. Doing life group. We're doing, we're doing, we're doing all the things. And, and, like, and let me say this. Mm-hmm. Like working with you, I, I saw that trend with you. It was right. like anywhere you anywhere you were asked, you would serve, number one. And number yeah. two, you you were like, hey, give me give me anything. Right. Give me anything. Right. Like I will I will help drive the golf carts we'll, it'll, we'll from the done. parking lot. We'll if I got a done. driver's license, I'll yes. do it at Lakewood. Yes, yes. And I saw that. And here's the thing that, and I'll say this about you for anybody watching. Mm. Is that you did it in kids' life? Yep. You did it in middle school and junior high. Mm-hmm. You did it in high school. Mm-hmm. Then you started doing it in college. Yep. The last four years. Yep. And you've served and served and served and yep. served and served and served and served. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, if you want to find your gifting, like Anand, serve the house. Serve the house. There's no other formula in yeah, the kingdom I, I of can't, God. I can't. That's it. Jump yeah. in and serve. Yep. Your gift will come to the surface. Mm-hmm. People will see it. God will begin to open doors. It's the same formula for everybody. It's there is really no fast simple. track nope. in the kingdom of God. No. Nope. There is no fast track. No. Nope. To be like, walk through the door, serve for a month, boom, you get a microphone and a platform. Facts. That's not how this works. At all. And I think that um, if I can say for your reputation, that is that is your living example, is the fact that you have, um, the reason that you've gotten an opportunity yeah. to be on a platform with a microphone in your hand and lead worship to honor God is because yeah. you were willing to do it when nobody else watched. Right. You were willing to come to the crew yeah. 
uh, like classes, yeah. do the whole binder and notebook. Like yeah. we had a whole curriculum for junior high leadership team. Facts. And we had a handful of students every year that would go through it, about 15, 20, 25 kids that would go through it. Mm-hmm. And I remember doing um, a particular book called Follow Me. Mm. And we did that. And, and, and I know you were part of that group. Yeah. But um, anyways, I just remember those with you. And, and there's, uh, you know, a few other, JoJo, a few yep. other people who have come through all of this together. Yeah like kids in the house who grew up. And I love seeing it because that's the way the kingdom should work. Exactly it's that. the way the local church should work. Exactly. Is that. those of us who have come through as leaders should be looking for who's next. Yes. Should be Paul and Timothy. Like we're looking for the next leaders and saying, calling them out and saying, you have a gift, you have an anointing, we see it on you yeah. and we're gonna spend time. And it's been this slow on-ramp for mm-hmm. you over the years yeah. to where my favorite thing about you is the reputation that people have at Lakewood Church. Man. That's the key. If you want to know what leadership is about, the reputation in 1 Timothy 3, yep. Paul actually says reputation has to come first before anything else. If That's they it. don't have a good reputation with the community that they're supposed to serve, right? nothing else matters. Yeah. That's Anyways. Good. That, man, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank and, you. And I think that, that to me is, is the greatest... Um, is the greatest principle 100%. for any leadership, but especially in the church, Yeah, is what's the reputation of the leader? And um, nobody's perfect. Exactly. We right. all make mistakes mm-hmm. um, and we get up from it yep. and we continue to move forward. That's it. But um, so what has it been like over the last two or three years as you've, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you've had an opportunity to really start start leading more right um in different areas not only on the platform in leading worship yeah. but in other other ways and being sort of being brought up yes yeah like, what has it been like the last two three years yeah the last two three years man uh it's been insane i think so um 2022 i think is when we get that's when Devonte and serena come through our mm-hmm. new youth and young adults pastors um and at the time we were doing like hope and life nights um and they i think they were great for the season but i think a lot of us were also like i think our next generation needs something a little bit more consistent because mm-hmm. at that time hope and life nights we were meeting like one time a month and i think you could tell just like people would like linger after services and like we were doing life groups and stuff like that and i think people just wanted something more something more frequent um so then 2023 we start doing weekly services again and so we're back wednesday kids want to kids don't want to visit it they want to live in it it's simple yeah. Simple as they that. want to live in the house, not visit the house. That's yeah. a fact. That's yeah, exactly that. And so we started doing weekly services again. And um, I would have conversations with Devante and he's like, you know, do you think you're called to full-time ministry? I was like, oh yeah, 100%. Like, I don't think there's anything else. And he was like, what do you think that looks like? I was like, oh, I think it's probably, you know, in worship and like worship leading. And um, and he told me he was, he said, I think there's something more to it. And I was like, uh oh. I don't know what Uh-oh. you mean by that, but yeah. I was like, okay, sure, yeah. you know, and and so I, and again, at the same same thing we're doing, I'm still uh, life group leading, still leading worship, and but um, 2023 is also when I started the leadership program, and I started that in January. I was from January to June, and I think again, and I think at this time is when I'm starting to like. I, I, when I started growing more in the leadership program, because we, I mean, you guys have, a, it's a phenomenal program. Um, and like, this is not even to like plug in or anything like that, but it really truly changed how I view myself as a leader because I think I got to know myself more as a leader and got to figure out how I lead, what type of just personality I was in general, what that means for me as a leader and doing the different case studies and connecting with the different people. And I think it was cool because I was one of the youngest people in the program. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was like, and it, it was cool too because you, you also challenged me to where you were like, you know, don't think just because you're the youngest, like you don't have any input. Like you very much have something to say. There is wisdom that you have inside of you that is going to be beneficial to the class. And I think for me and still so being able to like um, give input and give response, but then also just be a sponge because there was people who worked in oil and gas, who worked in education. It, it wasn't just people who did full time ministry. Yeah. And I think that really i think once i completed that program i and i figured out who i was more as a leader it i saw the difference um i even did i did worship foundations with daedra during that point in time as well and so for me after i did that full six months i felt a shift in just the way that i went about leading life groups and the way that i went about um like discipling the different students that we had every week how i went about leading worship because i had a better understanding of what the historical context of worship was and um 
I think having that is where I kind of realized I think and I think through that as well God was also softening my heart when it came to the idea of pastoring because I think especially for me as I got older I think the more I was like I don't want this because for one I understood the weight and then also I think in the last 10 to 15 years we've seen it be stewarded in interesting ways to say the least um and for me I was like I I don't I've seen people like you know kind of squander this and like I didn't really want I don't want to be one of those ones like God you don't have to make the example of me I'm good I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, just gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna you know be be a faithful worship leader be a faithful servant and do that and that's it um but I think as understanding now looking where I'm at now and I think it, it's funny that I think God will and, and I think you hear that a lot with a lot of pastors who are like you know this wasn't in the plans it wasn't in the cards like I didn't have any desire to be a pastor it's just when, when God calls you, he calls you and it's time to go. And I think for me, after I did the leadership program, I was like, okay, God, I, th- I think I'm, I, I could, if you want me to be a pastor, I'll do it. But maybe when I'm 30, right? Like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'll wait, let me, you know, I'll grow and continue to grow. And maybe I'll do like worship leading first and however you want to do that and use that. And then when it comes time, like maybe a young adult's pastor, fine. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Or like, you know, how, whatever that looks like. Which is funny because that's actually biblical. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. For yeah, real. Yeah, in, in, yeah. In, uh, in Israel's ancient history, like mm. the prophet Ezekiel, mm. um, Ezekiel, the, the, uh, the um, temple mm-hmm. in Jerusalem mm. in f- about 590 BC was torn down and it was right as he was turning 30 and you had to wait as a Jewish man. You wow. could not be a priest in the temple until you were 30, between 30 and 50 years old. That's why that. Jesus started his yeah. ministry of 30. Yeah. But what's interesting about it is the Bible doesn't say you have to be wait till you're 30. Facts. That was that was the norm. And yes. Ezekiel was actually lamenting the fact in mm. his book at the beginning of his book yeah. that the temple was being torn down because he had waited his whole life to be a priest in the temple. Facts. So I say all of that to say the heart is what God will give you to to serve his people well. Exactly. Ezekiel had a heart whether he was 15 or 18 or 20 or 25 or 30, right. he was waiting, Yeah. but his heart was to serve. Exactly. And I think that's the same with you. I'm sorry, yes. continue. No, 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 you're fine. That's really good. Um, And and so, yeah, I was like, I'll just wait till I'm older. And then, but you know, the interesting thing that'll start happening is like, they'll be like, oh, people were giving me prophetic words. I remember me and you went to lunch after the leadership program was over and we were having a conversation and we were just like it was just like general it was just great great food great hangs but i remember you said you were like um the lord has been showing me how he wants to use you as a minister mm-hmm. um not just like to this country but all around the world and i was like hmm, that's really interesting he didn't just say like worship or he didn't just say like in terms of like music or like songwriting or anything and i was like oh i was like god i don't know what this means but i think i'm starting to catch a drift here um can and I can I just say I yes. had zero idea 100 about what was happening beside or what was about to happen behind the scenes I, I with know. you yeah. as a pastor at Lakewood yeah. I had no knowledge yeah I hadn't talked to Pastor Devonte right hadn't talked to Pastor Caleb hadn't yeah. talked to Pastor Nick hadn't talked to anybody yeah had no idea so anyways that's, yeah and that's just it was so I was it was just stuff like that was happening or um, it was just like different prophetic words I would get from different I remember Pastor Caleb. Um, before I figured it out, he he had said he was like, um, he he told me he was like prepare well for what's coming up next, and I was like, what? I don't even know what that means. Mm-hmm. And it was just small stuff was happening. I was like, okay, God, something is obviously happening. I just don't know what. And I could and you're cooking up something, but in, it seems like everybody else knows but me. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm just praying, staying faithful. And then when I really I keep hitting this mic, but when I really figured it out, I think was. August. August is when we, I got the chance to be a part of three different panels. And we did our leadership program panel mm-hmm. in the main sanctuary. We did a life group leaders panel in youth. And then we did a young adults panel that I was a part of as well. Yep. And I was like, hmm. I said, um, God, you know, I don't really do this he whole to show talking signs. thing. Like, yep. I don't really know. What's, like, you've been doing a lot of like just communicating lately. Like, I don't really know what that's about. And I said, okay, obviously something's happening right and then fast forward and also during this time as well um pastor Devante is also like he's like like i'm getting i'm i usually get the chance to be the one to pray after we lead worship in youth and he's like hey i want i want to really challenge your speaking gift and how you go about praying and i'm like i think it's i think i got an idea of what's going on yeah yeah and and so uh, this is all this is happening. I'm getting more chances to uh, prepare sermons and speak in J High. Um, and Caleb will be like, "Hey, you want to speak in J High?" I'm like, "Okay, sure. Like, let's let's figure it out. Yeah, might as well." Um, 
and then as time goes along it was march of this year and um i came i just walked into church just attending and Devonte texted me he was like hey when you get to church come to the fifth floor i was like oh i'm fired lovely <laughs> i was like i don't I'm out. <laughs> i was like i'm out i'm packed up i don't know Game what over. i did but i'm like it's a wrap appreciate it thank you so much and it was in that meeting where he told me he was he was at first it was funny he, he mentioned he was like i want you to come work for me and i was like oh cool like a admin vibe yeah, yeah, or like I can coordinate stuff some little assistant like you need help like a small like i don't know yeah. something, something like i don't know anything and he was like i want you to come work for me as a new junior high pastor and i said ah right now i said at this 22 i was like got it cool Thanks. Great. <laughs> great. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Uh, that nervous and, confirmation. And, and yeah, this like, sounds wonderful. Like, Let me yeah, just. Yeah. We can totally do it. Yeah. And like, um, and so it was from then on. Obviously, is when I found out. And then from there, I started coming up on Tuesdays to be able to just shadow Caleb. And like Caleb was just um, teaching me everything. <sighs> that I was that he knew and so I'm, I'm shadowing Pastor Caleb I'm shadowing Pastor Devonte, and I'm in like the different staff meetings and this is from I, I think one thing I want, I want to say about this too is um, I found out in March and as you guys just found out I didn't start till September yeah right and so I think there was like a, a waiting period that happened in between to where um, I was and you know sometimes like processing with like just a job in general can take time mm-hmm. but with that, I think I'm so grateful for how much time that it took from March to now, because I think because of that, that season I had of being able to be in those meetings, like learning um, the different rhythms of how things work on staff and how to think as a pastor. And I think it was it was really, you know, it was almost like it felt like a, like an internship, honestly, like yeah. that, I, that I was doing and I was being able to just put my hands to certain things and like being able to help with events like Hope in Life yep. and summer camp. And it was cool because like at the time I joined like right before like. I think for anybody who's in youth ministry, you know the summertime is like kind of like grind time, for lack of better terms. Absolutely, but it's party it's, time. It's, it's party time. As soon as they're out of school, like they're they're bringing all the friends to youth. Like you're doing all the, the big events, and so that's when we have our youth and young adults conference, and then that's also when we have our youth summer camps. And so, being able to be a part of planning those things, and and um, and I think through it all, there's I just had like this excitement and like this peace that I felt. That was the biggest thing. Was like I knew it was it wasn't just me trying to like. Um, forced my way in it was like i think god really made a way and opened the door and he was also like preparing my heart and like giving me peace and like giving me the the comfort that i needed to be able to go and walk this out in confidence and love that and now it, to make a long story long is is where we sit today where i get to talk to pj about being the junior high pastor about being yep. the first gen z pastor but i i think through i think just one thing that in, in all of it, like nothing was wasted. I think throughout, like there was there was moments in time to where, um, especially in the last like two or three years, where I think I was like, God, um, I'm, I know you have a great calling on my life, but I don't really know what that looks like, and um, I'm working like you know smaller part. Like I did data entry for a moment in time, and then I was like a a I was like a kickboxing trainer, and I'm just, I'm just doing like random side quests. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. But the biggest thing for me is like I'm doing all these jobs. Um, on the side just so it can open up for me to be able to do what I do uh, for ministry. And so I'm like, as long as it, when I was doing that entry, I was working in the morning, Monday through Friday, I was able to come to youth. I was able to come to young adults, like nothing. It didn't mess up anything in that flow. And that was perfect for me. Um, even when I was working, the last job I was just doing as a kickboxing trainer. And it was like, it was the same thing. It was just, it, it was super part time. It wasn't like too heavy as far as like workload or anything like that. And it opened me up to be able to still lead worship, preach when I had to and do all the things. And so, but I think with that, um, there's, I think I'm, I'm better for, for example, with my data entry experience, the administrative aspect that comes with pastoring and shepherding, because it's not like you, if you don't know, you'll learn very quickly if it's something that you're stepping into. It's not just you putting together a sermon and then coming and preaching. And That's going right. Home. Like That's right. there's a lot of planning that goes into um, services and uh, big events that we have and, and just different things that you pick up. And so I think because of that, of that season where I was like, God, I, this job is like really boring, but like it's making time for what I want to, what I really want to do. So I'm really grateful for that. But like it, I learned because I spent that time doing that and learning to just being able to be uh, pay attention to detail and like put um, enter data in these spreadsheets. It's now it's like, okay, now I'm able to like sit down at a computer and lock in and do like that admin side of things to be able to, That's right. um, to help our, 
um, our administrative assistant, uh, Gabby Aldridge, and not feel like, you know, I have to be like, hey, Gabby, uh, could you do this for me? Thanks. And then like, that's it. And just like overload her. But it's it's something to where now I'm like, okay, I think I kind of like figure this out on my own. Then ask her, you know, how to go about doing it if I need help with it. But um, and yep. even just like with you don't like, need to do it all. But right. You need to know how everything but works. at least. At, and that's one thing Pastor Caleb told me. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know, there's you don't have to make get like at least OK at the stuff that you feel like you're weak at. Yep. You know what I mean? Because I think especially in as as pastor, um, it can be very easy for you to think that you're high and mighty. And you could just like pass this off to mm -hmm. somebody else. who can. Do I it, pray right? and I teach the word. It's like and I give orders. Right. No, 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 no. no. That's, you're serving. Yeah. It's, it's And that leadership program, that's that's. Um, that's G the book Jesus on leadership that we That's read right. in the leadership program was like one thing where I was like, man, like if looking at Jesus, he just served everybody. You know what I mean? And his ministry was full of serving people. And like, you know, like, yes, we saw him do like great miracles. And like, obviously, like this is King Jesus that we're talking about. But That's right. it, I don't he never I don't think it was ever a thing to where he he boasted of his his position. Yep. Um, he was always talking to the least of these. He was having. Um, meals with tax collectors. He was meeting people right where they were at because of the fact that um, that's just what he was called to. He was called to serve and serve the people who he that's was right. serving at the time. And so I think that's and the we biggest lead, thing. We lead in the same image. We lead in the exact same image. As as Christians, we're trying to be more Christ-like. And that's I think right. that's in every facet. That's not That doesn't change the more that you get a title, the more that you get position. Speaking of, my final question for you. I want, actually, two questions. I want to yeah. ask you, who who has sown into your life? Who has impacted you? Yeah. Um, um, obviously, you came through the leadership program, of and course. I'm sitting right here, but yeah. it can't, it can't be me. Yeah, okay. right, right, right. <laughs> or the leadership program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. name somebody else other yes. than Jesus. Of course. And and our immediate uh, time together in the last year right, or right, two. Right. Mm -hmm. um, who has impacted you the most in your journey? Yeah, uh, I think there's there's different people for like different things. I think as far as like, for example, with what I fell in love with doing with worship, I think. Arthur Seeker has been huge in that he's our he's over Youth and Young Adults Worship yeah. here at our church. And Arthur's the goat. He's I think he's he's one of the ones that I think I've really grown as a worship leader. That's, he's, that's he's greatest of all me. time, by the way. And yeah, right, 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 for right, for the, right, right. We gotta be mindful. We gotta be mindful of the audience. <laughs> he's a goat. He's a goat. What? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but he, he literally, I think, just like stretched me as a worship leader. He he really put me in different positions where like, hey, try and lead this song, or like, hey, put we're going to put this in between so you can exhort here and learn how to do that. And then um, just also just making sure that, you know, sending us references and like making sure we listen to references and just like very like different things that you pick up and then it becomes, you know, like second nature to me now. But I think it was something that I learned when I was in high school of the importance of the there's a um, there should be a standard that you step into stuff that you care about with. That's right. And so with that, I think that's something that I learned. And then just even again, not in having that balance of like yes like doing this in excellence but then also letting the holy spirit move i think he's done a phenomenal job at doing that i think when it comes to um i think Dev devonta Tidwell, our, our youth director i think that that's somebody who i think you know and it impacted me so much in such little time like again because he came only it's only been like what two two, two years, years. Mm -hmm. and and i think and i think for me it was so funny i remember when we were doing the transition me and you had a conversation and I think I was at the time I was like a little bit hurt about it because I was like, man, like why are we? It's another transition. Why are we bringing in somebody new? Right. And I had all these questions, and I was I was a little bit salty. And you had told me you were like, I'm really excited for what this transition, what this transition is going to do for you. Mm -hmm. And I think Devante being um, a a young and also just like a, a black male, uh, mm -hmm. to put it frank, like it's it's easier to see it when you can kind of see somebody and you're like oh okay Put like he's doing that i can do that too mm -hmm. and so him being um in his or at the time i think he was in his like late 20s but the fact that he he came in and was able to step in and lead our youth and really be a voice for our students and being able to see that and i'm like man like this it makes it more attainable when you can see somebody who you're like wow if he can do it i can do it too and That's i think right. it's been a lot of stuff from pastor devonta that i've caught more than he's like just said to me in conversation it's just like watching the way he moves watching the way he handles certain things and even in these last um six months i've appreciated it more and more just being in different meetings where he's led and seeing how he's gone about doing things why he does certain things it, it it's i think it's shaped me a lot as as a pastor and then i think um finally pastor caleb i i think from there's like so many things i was reading this this fact I was, I was just like on my timeline it's like youth pastors 
average on average stay for 18 months. Yeah. If that. If that. Mm-hmm. And the average stay of a senior pastor right now in in our society, especially in America, is right. five years. Which is senior pastor. Insane. Yeah. And obviously a youth student starts in sixth grade and they don't leave until they're in twelfth right. grade. So So and, if you had if you had if you had to give one piece of advice mm-hmm. to somebody who's a thirteen year old Anand. Yeah. Girl or guy. Yeah. Tell me right now, what would you say to that person? Ooh. Um, Here's what I say. I'll let you think about it. Uh huh. I'm putting you on the spot. This yeah, is yeah, one of, isn't one of the questions yeah, I threw out fine, there. That's fine. That's fine. That's but cool. I want to. I want you to give a final thought. Here's yeah. what I would say. Your life has been a walking example of of a principle that Paul said to Timothy. Yes. God called you. He purposed you. Right. He graced you. Right. Uh, and then he released you. Yeah. Between God's calling and His releasing mm-hmm. is um, your calling and your purpose. What's the difference? Well. Um, be faithful what's in your hand with what's in your hand. That's it. And God will give you what's in your heart. Yes. David was faithful with, with what he had in his hand in the shepherd's field. Yeah. And God gave him the desires of his heart. Yeah. He hated the fact that Goliath stood up in front of Israel and taunted their God. And as king, he's like, I figured somebody would stand up mm. for our God, mm. but nobody has. Mm. And I don't understand why. Mm. So he had it in his heart. What, whatever title he was going to get, he wanted to be the one person in the nation that was like, they're going to they're gonna taunt our God? Right. No. Right. No. Somebody's got to do something or say something. Yep. So he had it in his heart to do that. But he had been trained in the shepherd's field with the, with the bear and the lion and all these animals defending the sheep. Right. So having said all that... Um, I think your life is is a great example of that, of being faithful with what's in your hand and God will open what's that. in your heart. I'll give you the last word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think for any um, 13-year-old youth student, I think the biggest thing is just get close to God now. Yeah. Like I think before you get too wrapped up in what he can do through you and like the amazing things that you can do with God, and um, I think build an intimate relationship with him now. Because if you, the younger that you build it, then you're going to be growing up and there's going to be, I, I think there's so many things that the Lord is protecting me from so many things that ways that I could have went that he didn't allow me to go to just because I made him Lord of my life at a young age. Yep. And it wasn't just cause I was following like my mom's faith, but it was, it was because of the fact that I knew him for me. And as I've continued to grow deeper in that relationship, I think that's like get in the necessary rhythms that you have to do to have an intimate relationship with him. Now read your word, Love that. get into that, pray and like really like pray to him and like talk to him because then, as you welcome him into your life at a young age, you're not going to be confused on where you need to go as far as, oh, where do I go to high school? Where do I go to college? What job do I step into? What job offer should I take? It's it's easy because then you'll be operating out of peace and you know that because I've talked to him and I know that he gives me peace and understanding for the places that I'm supposed to go, now I can confidently walk through those doors because he told me to go through here. It's not that I have to like dance around or ask these questions or ask for a confirmation 10 times. Yep. But no, it's because the piece that goes before me into the room that I was supposed to walk into. And I think the more that you build that intimate relationship now, your future self will thank you. So love it. Pastor Anand Faraji. Pastor Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you. 